So taking a look at the American healthcare system is something that when you look from the outside world, it's really hard to like fathom why Americans A, put up with it and B, don't like literally take to the streets and ask for universal health care. And a story this week that really caught Canada by surprise was uh, a woman from Saskatchewan decided to take a trip. She was, uh, she was pregnant and she ended up having the baby uh, basically six weeks early. So what happened when she was there, she uh, basically ended up in, in care before she actually had, it, uh, actually had the child. So her water broke while she went on a, on a trip to Hawaii. And what happened was is her travel insurance, Blue Cross, basically her insurance ran out while she was there. So obviously when you go, you buy travel insurance, you buy for a certain period of time. And then obviously if you get ill, you're not really that fond of uh, extending it. You're kind of stuck in your traveler's insurance. So while she was there waiting to have her child, then the baby was born premature, and the baby was actually uh, had to be taken care of in that hospital. The bill came to $950,000. There's now a campaign here in Canada to crowdfund that. Blue Cross wants no part of it, saying she had a pre-existing condition. And now we're in a situation where it's a million-dollar baby, literally. So the question that comes up for Canadians is how is this humanly possible? It also brings up the idea of how much it really does cost for Amer for Americans to do these things. This is not a normal pregnancy, but what we do want to bring up here is the idea that we saw a lot of this week, people saying, well, that's not a normal pregnancy, that's not normal. But when you actually take a look at what you would constitute as a quote-unquote normal pregnancy – the costs are quite high. I just want to take a look at this graph while I read you some statistics off the top here. So if we take a look at this data from the International Federation of Health Plans. It shows that on average, thousand dollars is a normal delivery in America. That's more than seventeen thousand if you're going to have a C-section, which is more than any other country that the group looked at from preterm births uh, that can actually be, you know, especially costly. So the, the preterm births that the woman had that uh, went from Saskatchewan over to Hawaii, this is a situation where these things run around 33000 if you have an okay, normal version of one. So ten grand just to have a, a, a straight-out child, no, no problems, normal, full house style. This is crazy to me. This is insane money. It, taking a look at this, at that graph that, that, that producer Jeff has up there, you take a look at normal delivery, C-section delivery, United States, Switzerland, Australia, the Netherlands, Spain, Argentina, and America is clearly leading this group. Of course, most of us in this country, in other countries, I should say, are, are universal health care. We don't worry about it at all. We love the insurance forms when we get there. Um, okay, around the panel again, I guess, just thoughts on this story. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I, I'm kind of frustrated with this. It goes back to the original topic that I kind of got left out of because of my mic. Um, this uh, We shouldn't be fighting for the lesser of two evils, but that's what we seem to do in this country. It's like, and then we shrug our shoulders and say, oh, okay, let's accept it. Um, this woman shouldn't be stuck with a $90,000 bill. And um, it's really, it just shows why making money out of, from healthcare is so wrong. To me, you sh this shouldn't be a thing. It should. It's it's life, I, and I I find it funny and sad in in two ways that like especially pro life people are so hell bent on making money from uh, preventative care from everything to do with healthcare industry, and, and this ninety thousand dollars is just astronom astronomically crazy to me. Um, she should have just had the baby in a cab. I'm just saying. <laughs> $950,000 is a lot of money. And the, I, I just thought it was funny that somebody's like, yeah, but that's not a normal birth. I don't, no birth should cost $950,000 for somebody. Like, no matter what's happening, that's a human life. And as, as I said, it is interesting that the pro life people are more upset of kinds of things, right? The idea that that never comes into cost. But, Haven, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I just, for whoever says that that's not a normal birth, what constitutes an abnormal birth, really? Like, where are you getting that from in the first place? 
I also want to point out that this is what happens when you're at the mercy of insurance companies. You're still going to get royally fucked. And it's unfortunate because, I mean, that's a shit ton of money. I'm having heart palpitations just thinking about having to pay that. It's ridiculous. And it's really not necessary. A lot of a lot of these charges are purposely inflated to get the most out of some suck out the most that they possibly can, which is rather unfortunate and it's embarrassing. And I'm pretty sure this lady is completely regretting having to come over here and having this situation happen to her because this is really gonna. I mean, I don't think that she's gonna really be able to afford to get out of debt. That's all. It's a fucking house that she just gave birth to right now. It's also a, the problem that, I, you know, going back to, I'm sure there's not many people on the panel that's going to stand up for the insurance the insurance world, but what's really, really ludicrous about this idea John is, will. Yeah, maybe perhaps Sean will. But the, the ludicrous thing about this, of course, is the idea that there's a pre-existing condition. So the pre-existing condition was a bladder infection, yes. It was a bladder infection that apparently threw this whole thing off, which is why they can't cover her. Of course, the other problem with the pre-existing condition, of course, is that you know you have a pre-existing condition if your doctor doesn't tell you, and a doctor cleared her to go. That's how she got the insurance in the first place. And apparently, when even asked, she wasn't even asked if she had any pre-existing conditions. Of course, the only one she had was a bladder infection. The idea being, once again, that insurance companies do not want to cover you. If they can get out of it, they will. Why? Because it's profit-based. So the idea of leaving the healthcare in the hands of insurance companies leads you to nine hundred fifty thousand dollar babies. Uh, Sean, thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to defend the insurance company. I mean, I, I assume that she obviously reported that she was pregnant. So, like, you have to assume some sort of risk if you're an insurance company that there might be a pregnancy complication. But I will point out that this woman is very negatively impacted by Obama's executive order because now that she has an anchor baby, she can't be deported. Always an angle. <laughs> always well, an angle. I mean, you, you went in the place that I didn't think you'd go. All right, all right. But in all seriousness, like this was obviously a ruse by a Canadian to have an American citizen baby. I I believe that she did this on purpose because you know getting an infection and going to a hospital for six weeks and then having a baby nine weeks early is totally what any sane person would do. Like. It's ridiculous. Like, the whole point of buying, like, she did the responsible thing. She bought an insurance policy while on vacation. A lot of Canadians do this. Haven referenced uh, Michael Moore's movie. They showed it. It was like, this is the only time Canadians buy um, American health insurance is when they come to America. Yeah. So, like, she did everything right, and I, I, would, I would start shaming the hospital for charging her so much. Like, it's it's so it's close to a million dollars. Like that's crazy. That's not what it costs. Like you're like this is the problem with our healthcare system is that um, because we have third party payers, uh, the hospitals charge the maximum they think they can get away with in order to in order to collect. Like it doesn't it doesn't cost this much money. And um, with this uh, with these kind of situations, you wonder. Um, why uh, Mexicans love America so much because, like, why would you come here if you know this is going to happen when you have your quote-unquote anchor baby? Like, I know this isn't an anchor baby situation, but you end up in the ER and you're in debt for the rest of your life. Like, she, she has to, like, declare bankruptcy here in America probably in order to get out of this or, like, kickstart something. Maybe she should auction off the naming of her baby to the highest donor. Like... Like I'm being serious. Like how is how is she supposed? There to you go, to Sean. There's there you go. You internet. solved it. There's and a... and can I can I be the first to su suggest the name be Clint? So if they make the cake, it could accidentally spell out another word that. Well, yeah, you could figure it out if you're smart. By the way, I bet you that the Canadians will end up passing a law if more outrageous things happen. That when you come to America and you get denied by your insurance company, that they'll help you out somehow, because that's how parliamentary systems work. The the well, tee and to, and then to double down on your tee the provinces does do that. Provinces already do that here. So she, the provinces kicked in twenty thousand dollars. Of course, 
unfortunately, twenty thousand dollars in this situation is not going to do you a whole lot of good. The, the the so she's basically there's there's two rights here. There's a GoFundMe campaign that Canadians are starting up for these folks, but they also are taking legal action against Blue Cross because of the, obviously they think the the pre-existing condition thing is kind of nonsense. So we'll see what happens with that. Around the table, though, basically, like, final thoughts on uh, the idea that this is the insurance system that you have, as well as just, once again, explain it for the Canadians watching and the people around the world. How are you okay with this system? (laughs) Because we are so, you know, it's kind of like when you're getting screwed over, your butthole kind of just relaxes eventually. Hey, it's, quit talking about my butt. I'm just saying. I'm learning from you, Tom. But it's like it, you just get used to it. Like Americans don't see. We don't know this word healthcare outside of a, outside of the realm of insurance company. Everything is based off of a profit motive. And the fucked up thing about being in America is that no matter what you do, there is some type of institution that wants to extort you, whether it's insurance, whether it's payday loans. Like, we are not about customer and consumer protection. And the funny, the fucked up thing is, is that she basically was the victim of these, of Blue Cross's old tricks. That's a very old trick to be like, oh, you have a pre-existing condition, you had a sniffle, so obviously we can't cover this, and that's like on you. That's something that it's just, they're, that's like right out of the old playbook, just throwing it at them. And it's rather unfortunate, but, you know, she's making a shitty life to say, I wouldn't come, if I'm a Canadian, and I'm any type of fucked up health-wise, I would not leave Canada. I would stay there until I'm okay, and then I would visit. Like, I would have popped that baby out, and then it, be like... I've got <laughs> final thoughts. Just, just quickly, from a Canadian perspective, like if you, you can't run into a Canadian who hasn't done has that exact problem. So, like for example, my folks are the uh, baby boomer age now, where they're heading down. They're thinking about, oh, maybe I should take a trip to Florida, you know, do a do a little time in winter in Florida, and it stopped many elderly folks because the insurance, the like traveler's insurance, is just way too high. So you're not only you're killing like tourist dollars and things like that, just kids that go to school there, like everyone's got a horror story. Of oh man, I went on a vacation and got sick in America. I had a I had a, a family member who went to school in New York, and literally got to like uh, basically strep throat and was you know on the hook for a thousand bucks like very so it's just it's unbelievable to us here. I I don't think I can we we are talking about this all the time on the show with guns and certain things. It's just it's really hard to convey the sort of bewilderment that people from the outside have on some of these systems. 